Greetings Super Swim Team, my name is Swim Team Captain 7. Today we're going to be taking a look at Amazon's The Tick. Specifically, we'll be examining Arthur and his relation to the world around him, and why Arthur might be more important than ever before. Superheroes have evolved from being just gods and monsters. Now the most popular heroes tend to be the most human. The ones that are the most flawed. The ones who have real struggles and real weaknesses. That's what separates the alcoholic, paranoid Tony Stark from the do-no-wrong Boy Scout Clark Kent. It's what makes a teenager like Kamala Khan more compelling and more relatable than Bruce Wayne. In this new noir-esque superhero drama, things are a bit less campy and a lot more serious, and events tend to have realer consequences and stronger repercussions to the world around them than in previous iterations of this all-inspiring arachnid. Gone are the days of chair-headed, mustache-twirling villains. Gone are the days of Leonardo da Vinci and his Time Squad. Gone are the days of smart-aleck, know-it-all, cosmic cosmonaut chimps. Now are the times of grim and gritty anti-heroes. Traumatized canines. Friedrich Nietzsche, who also died from syphilis, once declared God was dead. And on the day my family died, I learned that he was right. And weaponized syphilis. Fret not, though. Even if the stakes are higher this time around, there's still plenty of laughs to be had. He, he punched me in the crotch and then ran away. Seems like an odd way of saying thank you. The city hasn't undergone a transformation, but instead an evolution. No character reflects this evolution better than Arthur Everest himself. Arthur Everest is a young man traumatized by the death of his father, who got caught in the crossfire between the Flash Five, Arthur's own favorite heroes, and their evil arch nemesis, the Terror. In the same sense our present is defined by our past, Arthur's is too. The city that the Tick and Arthur protect exists in the state that it does because of what he witnessed firsthand that day. The part of his past he can't escape from. The day the Flag Force Five and Arthur's father died. That fateful day shaped Arthur and the city around him. Arthur doesn't think he's strong enough to take on the terror alone, and with no one to help him, or even believe him, you poor broken man, what's he to do? Arthur is tormented by his past and hesitant to grab onto destiny, and that's what makes Arthur work so well as the primary protagonist here. I'm sorry Tick, but I gotta insist, this show is yours in name only. In fact, outside of the cold opening, Tick doesn't actually show up until 8 minutes into the first episode, and that's over a third of its runtime. A pilot named for and after the Tick that he's not even in a third of. I think that says it all right there. Arthur isn't just a Ron Stoppable-esque two-dimensional comic relief character anymore. Instead of being a slapstick sidekick or a nerdy wingman, He's finally able to be a complete three-dimensional character with clear motivations, strengths, and weaknesses, and he's well-rounded in a way that the Tick never could be. The Tick is supposed to be cartoonish and campy. That's what makes him work. But that doesn't exactly work so well for the lead of a noir-driven superhero thriller. The Tick is frozen and stagnant. Whereas characters like Batman or Captain America could be ultra campy or ultra serious, the Tick pretty much has to be the Tick every time in every iteration, because a more relatable, serious version of him just wouldn't work. His motivation is goodness and prosperity for all. As pure and wholesome as the Tick's motivations are, trying to make him more complex would break the elegant simplicity of this character and completely ruin his charm. After all, can you imagine adapting Deadpool to be Super Friends-esque? Even in the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, Deadpool felt stilted and it didn't really work. And that episode was actually written by Deadpool's own creator, Joe Kelly. The Tick is all hero all the time. And that's why Arthur is our point of view character. He's terrified of the world around him in a way that the Tick never could be. Whereas the Tick is a lot like Superman, Arthur is a lot like just a man, aspiring to be more. Arthur is just like us, 
aspiring for greatness, but terrified of it all at the same time. After the cold opening, the very first scene of the pilot opens on Arthur going to pick up some groceries at the local ma and pa shop. This is one of the most important scenes in the show, as it establishes everything about the show and its world within a few minutes. Everything featured here comes up again later on, from the gang members, to the store clerk, to Superion. Everything in this show is actually connected, and it's all important. Mise-en-Scene is established and built through the usage of the radios and televisions surrounding Arthur. Similar to our own world, the news and interviews that Arthur is watching give us context into the world around him. It gives us context into its history, its recent events, and much like in the 24-hour news cycle of the 21st century, the happenings of our world around us are completely inescapable and unavoidable, just like we see with Arthur here. Here we see Whoopi and Superion discussing the events of all those years ago. The 90s, I had been going up against the terror for decades, and I had been up against him since I first got here. If he were alive today, well, I think I'd know that. The world of this show exists the way it does because of what the terror did all those years ago, just like Arthur. Arthur lives his entire life in the shadow and trauma of that single defining moment and he can't move past it. In the same way we can't seem to escape the news, celebrity gossip, politics, tragedies, or controversies in our own world, Arthur can't seem to escape the trauma of his past because there are reminders the of it all around him. To LA. The Flag 5 was blinded by weaponized syphilis and shot to death! Hey, can we shut this off? Arthur can't escape the trauma of his past because there are reminders of it all around him everywhere he goes. He can't even get groceries or take a cab ride. Arthur in this way is a reflection of the city, completely traumatized by the past. Arthur is a product of that traumatization and utterly unable to move past it. Despite Superior and everyone else's claims, Arthur remains adamant that the terror is still alive and running things from behind the scene. And despite his hard work and research, those around him refuse to help, instead writing him off as delusional. At certain points, the audience is even made to question Arthur's insanity, echoing the indecisive and insecure nature of Arthur's character. As the audience, we're made to question if the terror is alive like Arthur claims, or if Arthur hasn't made up the tick as okay, well to fuel his own delusions. There's a giant blue guy, and he's trying to fight crime, except he's not real! Or he's, I might be, I think I'm, Jesus, I'm the blue guy, I'm the blue guy. No, Arthur, you're not fighting anything, you're just a little unwell. Yeah, you're right. Arthur? I just need to, I need to figure out where my mind is, and it's all good. You're doing all right? Take it, she can't see you, okay? I can see him. Uh, yeah, what are, are you? I am the Tick, I am a superhero. Be defending the defenseless in the area, henceforth. Huh. As a matter of fact, conspiracies and mysteries drive the newest iteration of the Big Blue Bug. I don't even think he even exists. Probably some hoax started by the liberal elite. Just a bunch of snowflakes putting out their fake news to scare patriotic, uneducated Americans. The main mystery, of course, being what exactly is up with the terror? While Arthur is trying to obtain evidence against the terror, Destiny sends the Tick Arthur's way. The Tick crashes the stake out and gets Arthur arrested. Despite Arthur's further attempts to shy away from Destiny and run from it, the Tick hunts him down, eager for a partner in his fight against evil. Even stealing a super powerful suit of armor from the bad guys to give to his strapping new sidekick. In the next episode, the bad guys from the convenience store in the warehouse come after Arthur in order to obtain the suit that the Tick stole from him. Now Arthur's own demons are chasing him, metaphorically and literally, and his own path seems to be catching up with him. Inaction is no longer an option, but Arthur decides to act against character, not by fulfilling his destiny, but by stealing the blue poncho in order to hide from it. The poncho is symbolic of the Tick's world the destiny that Arthur is choosing to hide from instead of confronting. Despite this attempt to run and hide, Arthur and the Tick are now more visually similar than ever. The Tick has always been larger than life, and life has always been larger than Arthur. 
Arthur bears out his heart to the tick, confessing his fears and finally confronting them for the first time, instead of running from them. The second he was there and then the next second he wasn't. And he allows himself to become one with the tick's world, not quite embracing his destiny, but at least accepting it. If you stuck around till the end, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. This is my first real video, and I'd love to know what you thought. If you've got any advice or tips, I'd love to hear them. Constructive criticism is always encouraged. If you'd like to support my channel, hit that like button and subscribe down below. If you want to join the swim squad, ring that bell for notifications. Thanks everyone, I'll see you again soon.